In this video, what I want to do is do a quick review and summary of M behavior. Basically, what are all the different types of M behavior? How do we remember them? And then how can we actually go ahead and diagnose which, which polynomial has which type of M behavior? So I think the best way that I like to understand and remember M behavior is really just by remembering two functions. Okay. The first function is going to be the linear function. Y is equal to X. I think everybody can agree that they can remember Y is equal to X. Now this is also called the identity function, right? And that graph looks something like this. Okay. Now, if we're going to talk about the M behavior of this function, we could say, well, as the graph is going to the right, right? As we are reading this graph to the right, or you could say like a little person, right? Has brought on the graph as they're going to the right, as these dots are moving, right? The graph is going up and up, right? And if we were to expand this graph outside of the screen, the graph would continue going up and to the right. So we could say, you know, it rises right in this case. And then as we're going to the left, right? Or we're kind of walking down the graph here, we could see that this graph or as these points are moving farther and farther left, the graph is going down, or sometimes we call that like falling, right? So what's happened, what's important about this as the directions are different for both of them. Okay. So as we're going to right, we're going up as we're going left, we're going down. Now, the other function that I want you to recognize here is the quadratic function. And typically we don't teach and behavior, at least in a more advanced setting until we have recognized the difference between a quadratic and a linear equation. So the quadratic equation looks like this, right? Now this is kind of important because this is different than that equation. And this one, as we're going to the right, right? As my points on this graph are going to the right, we notice that, Hey, the graph is going up. And as we're going to the left, right? The points on this graph, as they move to the left, right? Are also going up. So we could say, as we go to the right, the graph rises. As we move to the left, the graph rises, right? If we were to keep on zooming out from the screen, the graph is going to keep on going up and up and up. Now, these are the two functions that I want you to memorize. And what's really important I want you to remember about this um, function, the y equals x, is that it actually has an exponent of one, okay? So what's the difference? You might say, well, this has an exponent of one, this has an exponent of two, right? Well, what's the difference? Like, what, what's the connection we're trying to make here? The connection I'm trying to make with you in this case is that this is a odd number. This is an even number. Okay. That's the connection because this is what's important about this. Whenever you have a, um, a polynomial that has the leading term or the leading, the leading term or the degree of that polynomial is odd, then you're going to have the same behavior as X to the first power. Whenever you have a polynomial that has a degree that is even, then you're going to have the same behavior as y equals x squared. So you don't need to memorize all the different behaviors of what's x to the fourth or you know x cubed and all that kind of stuff. You just need to know when it's odd, it's gonna have this behavior. When it's even, it's gonna have this behavior, right? And sometimes like we can just even summarize this. We don't even need to, we don't even need to know what the graph looks like. We just know that it's going to mm, rise to the right and fall left, right? Or rise to left and rise to the right, right? We don't even need to know what these graphs look like, but sometimes we do kind of like forget. So that's why I like to re, re that's why I like to kind of go back towards, um, know it, remembering the identity function and the quadratic. Now, again, let's just do a quick little review. And you're like, are you sure? Well, let's go and take a look at what Y X, um, X cubed looks like. If you look at the parent function of X cubed, guess what? It has the same M behavior. What about Y equals X to the fourth? right? It's going to have, again, my graphs are not going to be perfect here, but it's going to have the same behavior as X squared. And guys, this happens over and over and over again. It's all about the degree. Is it even or is it, I'm sorry, is it odd or is it even? Okay. Because here's the same thing. If I was going to ask you an example, right? And I'll say, um, what about Y is equal to X to the 33rd? And you're like, I have no idea what that graph looks like. Right. And I'd say, yeah, you probably don't. Right. But it doesn't matter. What is my degree of my polynomial? It's odd. So guess what? My M behavior is going to be, it's going to rise to the right and fall to the left. Okay. Um, and what about if I had something like this, what about if I had Y equals, um, you know, X to the 444th, right. And then plus like, I don't know, an X squared, or let's do, let's do this real quick. A X cubed. Right now, again, remember the degree is the highest power. So we don't care about any other powers that are inside of um, a polynomial. We only care about the highest. And in case this polynomial here is even, then therefore we know what the end behavior is, right? The end behavior is going to rise to the right and rise to the left. 
And that's it. Now, if it's even or odd of the degree is only one part of our, of identifying our end behavior. And what I like to do for that understanding is to go back through our is to kind of write this in for our quadrants, okay? So when I'm doing this, when I'm kind of I'm understanding my end behavior, I'm looking at, is it even or is it odd, okay? So, no, never mind. I don't like to do even odd. I like to, let me match this up the way I had it last time. I like to do odd first. So odd, even. And this is the way I memorize the end behavior. So my odd function falls left, rises right, right? And sometimes I'll just draw this graph here. There you go. For the even function, I just kind of do a nice little quadratic. Now you say, well, what about these two, right? How do these are fine, but like, what about, what about down here? How do we figure those out? Well, there's two parts. We know when it's odd and even, right? But there's also something else that happens. What about when we have a reflection about the x-axis, okay? So when I have a y is equal to a negative x, what that's doing is that's reflecting the graph across the x-axis. So now what's happening is this graph is going to look something like this. Okay, so now the graph is being reflected. So the end behavior is basically being now switched. That's very, very important to understand. The same thing happened here. When I have a y is equal to a negative x squared, what is that doing to the graph? That is now flipping the graph, okay? So now what I want you to be able to see here is when my leading, um, before we can, we know what these are, right? So now the other operations are like here and here. But what's the difference? What's the change that's going on? Okay. So here we talked about the exponents. Here, what's the difference is, is what we call the leading coefficient. Okay. And that's going to be the number in front of your exponent with the highest degree or the highest power, which we call the degree. So when my, well, sometimes we would just call this like our A is going to be negative, right? That's when we look down or our leading coefficient. So I'll say this. So what I like to call this is my degrees. Okay, so your degree is either odd or even, right? We know it's going to be those two forms, either both up or both down. It's going to be up, down, or up, down. And then here is going to be your leading coefficient. Okay, so your leading coefficient is positive, which is right there, and negative right there. So hopefully, you can maybe go ahead and take this down, cut it up, right? And keep it for sake. It's a great little review to remember and obviously go ahead and work on some practice problems because you will never forget end behavior for the rest of your life. Hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, I look forward to seeing you in the next video where I'll go over more examples helping you use this information to be able to find the um, end behavior of a polynomial. I'll see you guys then. Cheers.